morning to everyone who's just joined. My name is Susanna and I'm a marketing coordinator for Nelson. I'm just going to kick start tonight's session with a little bit of housekeeping um, and then we'll move over to the main presentation. But please feel free to use the Q&A um, on the chat. Um, they're both open if you have any questions. And um, we will just start with an acknowledgement of country. We can get started, I think. Everyone's kind of trickling in. Um, but in the spirit of reconciliation, Cengage Australia acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. And just with a little bit of housekeeping, so this webinar is being recorded um, and will be emailed out along with the slides to everyone who's registered sometime next week. It's usually pretty early. Um, the Q&A is open. Um, please put any questions you have in the Q&A and then any comments you might have in the chat. There's designated question time at the end so that way we can just make sure all your questions get answered. Um, if you have any post-event questions, please contact us at os.secondary at cengage.com um, and then we can direct you to the right person there. Um, so I'm just going to introduce our wonderful presenters tonight. So. Um, with us, we've got Dion, who's the head of mathematics and a secondary mathematics teacher at Shenton College in Perth, Western Australia. Um, in the past, he's also had roles of year nine and 10 mathematics curriculum leader and a gifted and talented academic programs coordinator. And he's also been a board member of MAWA. Um, and we've also got Dirk with us, who's an experienced teacher and former head of mathematics. And he's also a lead author and senior publisher of mathematics senior publisher, sorry, of mathematics series for over 20, uh, over 30 years. He's published and co-written eight best-selling mathematics series for Heinemann and Pearson. Um, he's won several Australian educational publishing awards and he's also the manager of secondary mathematics at Nelson Cengage. So I'll pass over to Dion, who's gonna kickstart tonight's main presentation. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, Susanna. Uh, hopefully you can all hear me well and thank you for joining tonight. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to present uh, on behalf of the co-authors of this series for Maths 12 uh, applications. Um, before we do begin, I do wanted to just introduce what the kind of philosophy, philosophy of the text has been in, in the design of the text and the construction of the chapters. So when we uh, looked at the design of the text, we're looking at that key idea of what makes a successful student in mathematics and in the mathematics exams for the WACE exams, and how can we start to incorporate those features into a published text um, to support both the teachers and students in the classroom and obviously the students then at home. So I'm going to be taking you through uh, two key two key aspects um, of the text. I'm going to take you through a sample chapter uh, written by one of our co-authors and, and identify the key features of those of our chapter structures and how they benefit both perhaps a teacher and a student. Um, and I'm also going to take you through the key core aspects of what it means for our um, text to promote examination success. Okay, so the first aspect is going to be the idea of a chapter and how it's been designed. So the chapter we're going to look at today, and it's really just the key features rather than the content, is the trees, flows, and assignment problems, which most of you I won't have taught yet in your teaching programs. Um, in terms of how I've structured the slides, anywhere you see that little teacher icon of instructing, it's where I've identified a key aspect of the, the structure of our chapters that benefit uh, the teacher. And where you see the student reading the book is kind of a benefit to the students in their use of the text um, in preparing them as best as possible for examinations. So pretty trivially, we start with our chapter contents page. So each chapter of the text is a very clearly outlined uh, contents page where students and teachers can see the, the contents of the text. And the, the contents are very uh, explicitly broken down, and I'll talk about this a little bit later on, uh, into subtopics uh, that are all governed by how we um, read and interpret the syllabus. So in terms of uh, each syllabus alignment, there's a little uh, syllabus co coverage section at the start of every chapter, which will identify for teachers when they're going through and using the text to align to their course and assessment outlines, what syllabus points are being referenced and included in the text. Now you'll see um, that it doesn't necessarily have to be in chronological order. They've been grouped 
uh, according to the, the topics. So for example, this chapter eight includes both the minimum connector problems as well as flow and assignment problems. And it's left out the chunk on critical path analysis for a following chapter, because it's quite a standalone topic, uh, even though it's not um, in order of the syllabus points. And the other benefit for the students in terms of having the syllabus coverage there is it kind of streamlines all of the documentation. Instead of students having to move between uh, a syllabus document and a textbook, they've just got the syllabus document pretty much there in each chapter. And teachers can then incorporate it in part of their examination preparation as well and getting the students really familiar and being masters of their own syllabus. So they are very clearly uh, aware of what is expected of them under these syllabus points. Uh, Nelson mind tap is something that Dirk will refer to a little bit later on, but each section uh, has some mind tap uh, references, which is the online platform used for this text. They are both teacher and student references and resources, uh, both supported by videos, worksheets, work solutions. And at the start of each sub chapter within a chapter, um, there are the references to what kind of resources are provided for that chapter. But Dirk will refer to that a little bit later on. The sub chapters uh, throughout the text are again very clearly identified uh, and you can identify the sub chapter as a kind of blue uh, starting with a blue head a heading. Um, the one thing that I do appreciate about these sub chapters is that it's not just, for example, a sub chapter on the Hungarian algorithm where the, the authors have felt necessary. They've really broken it down into separate problem types um, so that it helps students and teachers really identify and direct the learning to what is critical. So for example, the Hungarian algorithm, we know how many aspects of that kind of problem there are in terms of the allocation problems. A, a stage two, we have to reduce the, the matrix or the table again, uh, the maximization problems, and those kind of problems that are unbalanced in the rows and column dimensions. So just an example of how those are really explicitly broken down rather than just one section on for something like the Hungarian algorithm. And same with PRIMS. Uh, it's not just one section on PRIMS, it's PRIMS algorithm as a, a graph-based method and then PRIMS algorithm as a table method. Now, throughout the text, uh, obviously there's gonna be content explanations. Anytime a piece of uh, terminology or content is introduced for the first time, if it's a key uh, piece of language or something from a SCARSA glossary, it's identified in blue. Um, and then where appropriate, those, term those pieces of terminology are supported with visuals to aid the understanding. So in things like graph theory, you can obviously imagine the importance of the visual um, to support the understanding of the text. But when there are not um, kind of glossary references, so you can see that the glossary, re glossary references, anything in blue, uh, is then referred to in a uh, glossary index at the back. So it's not just a page number of what it refers to. It also has the re-summarized definition uh, that was introduced earlier on in the text. Now, obviously, as authors have written the text, uh, a glossary definition might be slightly more synthesized than how it was introduced in the text, because the text is obviously written as if it's talking to students. Um, whereas at the end of a glossary, it might just be a nice succinct definition of what was referred to. But like I was saying, if there's uh, sections of content explanations whereby uh, they are not including any new terminology, the way in which the text is constructed is it's just very, very student and teacher friendly. Um, so if you read through that example there, it's something that teachers can quite easily use and refer to if they were to um, project it up onto the board, but it's also something that students could pick up and read without it having uh, anything too complicated. And once again, where appropriate, they have um, supported, they supported the text with diagrams that reference exactly what's being referred to in that. So for example, talking about valid and non-valid cuts in a uh, flow diagram. Now, it's not just all chunks of text and all content explanations. Uh, there are certain points within those content explanations whereby we've introduced summary boxes. Now, summary boxes uh, can take one of two forms. Uh, the first form of a summary box is just to really reiterate what the key learning and key teaching points are within a chapter. So, for example, if we're introducing trees and spanning trees for the first time, uh, a couple of sentences that really summarise what teachers would want to be uh, reiterating and driving home in their messages when they're teaching, but it also when students pick up the book and read, it also allows them to kind of go to the summary box after learning the content and really make sure they understand definitely what is going on within that chapter. So nice and concise um, and they can refer to it any time. 
The other part of the summary box or the other benefit of a summary box is that if it's something algorithmic like our PRIMS algorithm or the flow determining maximum flow or Hungarian algorithm, um, they can also then be written in summary boxes. So any key processes like these algorithms are stepped out nice and clearly after they've been taught through some worked examples, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and you can imagine as a teacher, whereby you're kind of encouraging your students to write summary notes at the end of a topic or uh, in the lead up to a test or perhaps getting their exam notes ready rather than uh, them just printing off those colored nicely colored exam notes that all students use for waste exams without knowing what's on them uh, you can then encourage them to create their own summary notes whereby they've identified processes that they've learnt and they've had in their uh, test and text now our worked examples uh, now our worked examples are structured in a few different ways uh, the worked examples language the language that's used for them is of a test standard now they're not just simple skill based all the time examples it's language that students might see come up in an assessment so for example here you've got one of those compound commands the double commands in an assessment that is often very common so use an algorithm and hence find the total weight uh, depending on how the example is structured you will see that there is a, a steps or, or instructions to the students of how you go about solving the problem and then working out to support the the steps and the instructions these are often very useful for teachers teaching a course for the first time as well. You can pick up a text, you can read the instructions, which are in friendly language, um, and then it can help you consolidate how you're going to present the content to the students. Now, worked examples could be presented as such, whereby the working is directly below the steps. Depending on the complexity of what is being taught and uh, worked through, you might also have worked examples whereby uh, the text of the steps is written side by side each step of working out. So for something like Prim's algorithm from a table whereby there's quite a clear process that needs to happen within the table at each step. Uh, you can then see that the text is now in black, which is the steps, the working out is in blue and like before those critical annotations are being made in some a different color like red or orange, just to really allude to what is happening in the instructions for those worked examples. Now, in terms of uh, those worked examples, they're not just there. And if I go back, they're not just there to uh, never to never to be referred to again. And that's the nice thing about these worked examples is that you'll see each number. So, for example, there worked example four, and I showed you worked example three before. At uh, in the chapter section, we have what we call the mastery section. So each worked example that's alluded to in the teaching or in the, the content explanations is then replicated with a different example, but the same wording. So if students get uh, familiar with the wording in the worked example, they then get reassessed in their understanding of that wording of a question. Now it could be just the same extent. So you might remember that worked example three was just a use prims algorithm from a graph and hence, but you may also then remember that the example four was just a table okay, from a graph. But in, in where we've deemed appropriate, worked example four here has actually been elaborated on and two graphs have been provided for the students to practice and then two tables to practice. So whilst the wording out, wording is the same, um, the, the skill has been elaborated on a little bit more. And this mastery section, as the name suggests, is really for the students to build those skills um, and gain confidence in both the, the language of the course as well as the, the core maths. Now there is, you might notice that this starts from question three, the mastery examples that I've used. There is a section before the mastery section, but I'm going to allude to it in a couple of slides time because it does serve a bit of a different purpose. But following every mastery section in a uh, chapter, we have what we call the, uh, well, in fact, we've got within the mastery chapter, we've got the using CAS examples. Um, so you may see the worked examples written in green, but you'll also see other worked examples that are called using CAS and they are in blue. Now, where we've deemed appropriate, we've introduced the purely CAS-oriented worked example. So something like chapter eight, and I've had to steal an example from another chapter because chapter eight doesn't really have anything new. So trees, flows, and uh, the minimal connector problems, there's nothing really that's newly taught in that chapter on the CAS. So I've stolen an example from chapter four where graph and, the graph net graph and networks are introduced and an example whereby students get familiar with inputting matrices and evaluating matrices, which is gonna then serve them 
uh, benefit when they're solving for those multi-stage problems in the adjacency matrices. Um, and the benefit is it's got the two commonly used uh, CAS systems, so the class pad and the TI Inspire. Instructions are provided, screenshots are provided, and there's a color, co color coordination of each of the systems. So where an instruction is referring to a particular button, that's highlighted in red uh, for the class pad or blue for the TI Inspire. And students can then re uh, master that skill in the mastery section. And you can see in the heading there for that question six, uh, there's that reference to using CAS. So if they've forgotten how to do it, they can go back to the using CAS example and remaster that skill. Now, what I was alluding to before is after the mastery section, we then have the calculator free and calculator assumed section. Now, this, in my opinion, is, is quite a game changer in terms of uh, how textbooks have been structured in the past. I know from experience um, as a classroom teacher, a lot of students would say, hey, sir, would this question be calc free or calc assumed? How would I know? Now, the benefit here in this text is they're told. So they have a section following the mastery section whereby calculator freestyle questions have been provided. And then following that, they have the calculator assumed section. And now these questions can be drawn, and this is the other benefit, they can be drawn directly from past WACE exam questions. So you'll see here the reference to the 2019 WACE exam, but we've only picked out part CI and part CII. And that is because part A, B and D possibly related to other content in the graph theory chapters, but CI and CII related to this, the PRIMS algorithm, okay? So, where possible, we've split waste exam questions up so that they are only related to the content that's being looked at in that chapter. But in other cases, we've used entire questions if the entirety of that question has been addressed in the content of that chapter. And the other benefit here is that students will then start to become aware of how questions would be assessed in a final examination after they've attempted the mastery style questions. And obviously both uh, style of questions, the mastery and the exam style questions have been written with the, the correct language of the exam. Now, the text uh, authors have used every single question from the WACE exams from 2016 to 2021, somewhere in this book, uh, whether it's in the, the chapter exercises or some other place of the book, which I'll allude to a little bit later on. Um, it's quite a handy resource to then go and test their knowledge at an exam standard fairly soon after learning the content, because we know how fast the year 12 courses move and how quickly they need to master and become familiar with those content space skills. And then in some cases, so in this calculator assumed question, you'll see that there's no WACE uh, reference. There's no SCARSA reference. This is because not every uh, content area has been thoroughly assessed in the past in the WACE exams, as we found. Uh, so where we've deemed that the content has been a little bit lacking in terms of exam style questions, we've tried to then supplement with additional exam style questions. So you can see here, it's still in the spirit of the applications course, it's still quite heavily language based. Um, the language is of an exam standard, and I will allude to the marks, uh, mark allocations a little bit later on. But it's still a very suitable and supplementary exam style question where we've deemed that it's not um, not filled in with the waste exams enough. Now the section apart from the mastery, so every chapter will generally go mastery, calc free, calc assumed. However, in exercise, for example, 8.1 of chapter eight, there won't be what we call the recap session uh, section, but in exercises 8.2 and 8.3, there will be the first section of recap. Now recap is designed as the name suggests to provide two questions on the previous chapter. So this, these are two questions that have come from chapter 8.2 or exercise 8.2 on min and max flow. And what we're looking at is they can be uh, multiple choice questions, but they don't have to be. So it's the only place in the text whereby multiple choice questions can appear. There's a couple of reasons as why they can be multiple choice. Either they can be used as te for teachers to start a lesson. So as a lesson starter for a subsequent topic to so just a recap or even a lesson conclusion. Um, and they can be used obviously any point in the year if you wanna use them as a teacher. Otherwise they're there for the students to use before they start the following exercise, just to make sure they've really understood um, the, the content. Now, the other benefit is that uh, the multiple choice 
we don't have much multiple choice when it comes to maths uh, and our waste exams. Obviously, there's no multiple choice questions in our waste exams, but having them placed in a textbook really gets the students to think about, and you can encourage this as a teacher, to think about the idea of the reasonableness of a solution. So when you're doing certain problems, you can go, and it might not work for this uh, min, min cut problem, max flow, but you can look at those answers and go, is there an, an answer that is unreasonable? And get that reasoning aspect into your classroom and go, why is this answer unreasonable? And what seems to be the more appropriate answers? And then the last key feature of the, the chapters of each chapter is a chapter summary. So all of those summary boxes and any key teaching points that have been throughout the chapter are then taken and put at the end of the chapter to a chapter summary. So for example, here, just an excerpt of chapter summary for, for eight uh, is the summary points that were in the Hungarian algorithm. So students again can be directed to these to make sure that they are in the study for a test or an exam, they've got the key notes, they have recognized what the algorithm steps are and they can include them on their notes pages if they're allowed a notes page. Um, but also as teachers, you could very easily uh, screenshot or use those steps as part of your teaching, okay? So at that point, I would encourage you to direct any questions into the Q&A, which we'll refer to at the end on the, the features of the chapter. But my last little section that I wanted to uh, refer to was what about this text um, is the maximizing exam success? Now you've seen a couple of features already that I haven't really uh, teased out. So I'm gonna use an opportunity to tease some of those out, but there's also a couple of features that I've left uh, out as well. The first of those features is the exam hacks. So an examination hack uh, is quite clearly identified as a little lock, lock, and, uh, lock and key icon in a, in a yellow box. And those exam hacks can appear anywhere in our text. So they can appear next to key content, next to glossary terms throughout the text. Uh, they can occur in worked examples, but it's any point in time in the text whereby there's been a critical piece of uh, advice or a key teaching point that teachers need to remember or perhaps a bit of a paraphrasing from uh, the markers reports in WACE exams, whereby there's advice being given to teachers around what do they need to make sure they are teaching when they are addressing this content. Now it is still rec uh, written in quite student friendly language. Um, and then students can write little tips. If they're not gonna bring in a page of notes, then perhaps these exam hacks might be useful tips to put on their pages of notes in an exam situation so that they can then remind themselves what they need to remember. So for example, there you've got a question might not always say to use Prim's algorithm, but obviously any minimum spanning tree problem, you should be looking at, can you use Prim's algorithm by inspection or through a table? So that's one standout feature in terms of giving advice for exam hacks. The other key feature, which you would have seen pop up already is that each section uh, of the calculator free and calculator assumed questions have the mark allocations assigned. So if it's a start scars a question, you can see that the total marks are included and the marks per part are included. Um, and it really enables teachers to remind students as they're working and encourage students to become a bit more self reflective, such that when they are doing these calc free and calc assumed sections, they're really thinking about have I shown sufficient working out to gain myself the full two marks or gain myself the full five marks as per part C. Uh, and it really it helps teachers walking around if you're if they're working on these problems during class time, you can see okay you haven't shown the sufficient amount of five marks. Uh, that would be needed for 12 C in that question, what other things could you think to include now that's if you want to make sure it's a, a job of the teacher to remind them of those things. But the other benefit is that there are work solutions that will be included on the MindTap platform the online MindTap platform which then teachers at their discretion, which Dirk will talk about, can make available to the students um, at any point in time. Now, at the, uh, at the end of every chapter, just before the last exercise is introduced, we have a waste question analysis. So for example, question uh, chapter eight is about trees, spanning trees, max flow um, and assignment problems. The waste question analysis can come from any of those topics, or it could be if there's been a waste question that assesses multiple things in one topic. Basically, a waste question has been saved for the end of every chapter. Now, it's these sections whereby um, the question itself has actually been deconstructed in a way that helps students think about how do I answer this question? 
Now, it could be left to the students at their own devices to look at this, or it could be a useful tool for teachers to then discuss uh, as you're going through the content or as you're preparing for an assessment or the waste exam to look at how the questions are written and how to deconstruct them. So things like the key command words and key terminolo terminology are highlighted within the questions. And these highlightings are actually within the book. So key words like demonstrate, justify, what effect, draw it on the diagram, key things that students need to be paying attention to. Following each uh, annotation of the question, then some advice is given to the students. The advice is given to the students in two parts. So what things do they need to take into account uh, when they're reading the question? So there's a really nice opportunity here for teachers using this text throughout the year to really make a, a, a point of what purpose does the reading time serve in an exam? So many students just flick through the paper and look at the questions, but when they come to that question whereby they've really got to think about it, what things are they looking for as they are reading the question? And then if they've got time to think about, okay, how am I going to answer this question? And that advice is provided to the students as well. So for example, their advice when reading the question, highlight the type of answer that's required. So for example, are you asked to ter interpret your result, justify the answer, and then thinking about the question as well, identifying, am I being told to use Prim's algorithm or do I need to recognize that I need to use Prim's algorithm in this question? And then at the end of every advice section, so it goes annotations of the key um, waste questions and the language, the thinking about the problem and how to answer the problem and reading the problem, and then the work solutions, which have been taken straight from the waste marking keys. And each behavior within the waste marking key has been referenced by a tick um, in the, the work solutions. So they can see where the marks are being allocated and the work solutions will then provide um, the, key, the key student behaviors that they need to adapt. And the very last key feature that I will allude to is the cumulative examinations. I quite like this feature myself um, because it's one of those features that promote long term mastery rather than cram for an exam right at the end. So at the end of every chapter, we have a cumulative examination. Now, these are the headings for the cumulative examination for chapter eight, which are a little bit longer and more elaborate than maybe a cumulative examination at the end of chapter one. So as the name suggests, uh, topics can be included from previous chapters in an accumulative examination. So chapter eight's cumul cumulative exam has any and every possible content uh, point uh, from previous chapters in chapter one to seven. So they can see that in this cumulative exam, there are content points on recurrence relations, uh, questions on paths and cycles, loans and investments, networks and linear regression. The total marks and the reading time and the working time have all been indicated to the student and it's been broken into those two sections calc free and calc assumed and it's one of those things that again there's that reiteration of the importance of the reading time and going through and using that as an opportunity to make sure they can identify what the key content has been asked um, and revisit some of those skills uh, that they haven't maybe seen for a couple of weeks and once again a cumulative exam may include uh, past waste exam questions. So we've saved some waste exam questions to include in those exams, but other times where we've used up all of the waste exam questions in a chapter, um, they have then been supplemented by additional questions. And you can see that there hasn't been reference, but still being given an alloc allocation of marks uh, so that it still mimics that idea of what kind of working out would be required. So at that point, it comes to the end of my little uh, spiel about the chapter features and the cumulative exams. Um, I will now pass over to Dirk, who will give a bit of a rundown of what the Nelson MindTap platform is as an online resource. Uh, and then we will pass over to the sales team. Right, thanks Dion for that. Um, the Nelson MindTap is effectively the other side of the coin to the textbooks. Um, there, there is, um, you, you sort of got to think about the two together because they support each other and um, you, you really got to have a look at how, how the two work together. So I'm going to just go through some of the features of that. Um, basically, um, it's um, a, a learning space that, that, uh, that provides students with tailored learning experiences. Now, I suppose if you're familiar with 
Nelson Net, which some of you would be, this is sort of like Nelson Net on steroids or Nelson Net with several generations um, beyond that. It's just um, another le level um, learning um, platform. And yes, it has an ebook and it also has a huge number of resources a, a link to, to, the, to the textbook, but it also has a, a large number of other features that, that um, uh, sort of take this sort of uh, digital support to the next level. Um, for example, it, it has um, trackable assessment. So there's questions in there that um, the students can answer the questions and then the teacher sees the results of that and can uh, sort of make an assessment as to how they're going with those. So that's quite different to, um, uh, you know, to, to some of the other, um, you know, support that's been around. And also teachers can assign uh, material directly to a student, an individual student, or to a whole class, and that um, that is really a, um, a, one of the strongest features of it. Now, Dion um, focused on on this uh, summary summary that uh, that appears in each uh, chapter of the textbook. It tells you uh, the, uh, what we have, the resources that we have for that chapter. So it will tell you we've got video playlists for that chapter. It tells you we have a waste question analysis video, and it tells you in this case, the chapter has eight worksheets and the names of those. Now, the important thing to, um, to remember though, is that this list is only of the student resources. Okay, the students have direct access to these sources, uh, to, to these resources, but there's a whole range of other resources that are specifically for the teacher and most of them are up to the, the teacher can decide whether they want to assign them to teach and uh, to, to their students and when they want to assign them. The first one of these teacher resources that I want to just briefly talk about uh, are the work solutions and I know Dion's mentioned these. Um, every single question in each of the textbooks um, has a work solution, a full work solution, and those questions where there's marks attached to the que uh, to to the question um, also have marking keys. So there is a, um, a, a an enormous amount of backup um, in terms of sort of uh, new questions that you might not have come across, and and sort of being able to um, use these as a uh, you know uh, as a teacher taking on a series for the first time. And there's also that issue of uh, when do you give students a work solution? Because I've had many discussions with, with teachers about that issue and there's not a lot of agreement. Um, some teachers uh, at senior maths, they, they like to really um, uh, readily give work solutions to students. Um, others say, no, look, that, that makes, uh, they, they sort of kid themselves. They think they can do it or they don't spend long enough time on the question. So and I, I don't want to give it to them until whatever, some certain time. Now, what Nelson MindTap can do is gives you, it gives you um, the ability to decide exactly when you want to give those work solutions to, um, to students. And as you can see here, I mean, this was a, a SCARSA question or a waste question, um, but this applies to the exam style questions as well, like the ones that aren't actually SCARSA questions, but have been written in the exam style. That gives you a full work solution, with the answers and with those sort of um, uh, behavioural um, uh, statements about how, how the marks are allocated in the marking key. And another important feature of uh, MindTap in terms of resources is the waste question analysis, anal analysis video. Now, Dion's spoken about the, uh, the question analysis that appears in the textbook. Now, this is the same question but it's a video version of the solution. So students who might not get the most out of a static work solution that appears in a textbook often um, can get more from someone actually explaining it like a teacher would. So this video talks them through the working that they need to um, show and the thinking they need to um, go through to answer the question with someone talking to them and annotating it and so on. And, and along the way, they give sort of advice and tips and tricks about how um, what to do in the exam in these situations and, and things to remember. So we found that uh, this is um, one of the most successful um, features of, of MindTap 
in terms of um, value to students. We also have video playlists. Now there's a video playlist for every subsection in every chapter. So we end up with, you know, uh, well over a hundred of these video links um, in, uh, in across a one a book across a title. Um, now these are taken um, from YouTube or they're freely available. And what we've done is we've linked to them, but we've also annotated them, offered some explanation, and made sure that it's clear um, what sections apply to you or to your students um, if if that's an issue. Now. Also, the value of these are that we have gone through and picked the best ones we can find for each of these subtopics. And I know that a lot of teachers spend time doing that themselves. I think, well, where, where is a good video that explains a certain um, concept? We've done, what we wanted to do is do that for you. So, because it's just, it doesn't make any sense to have sort of um, te every teacher in the state trying to find their own, you know, collection of videos when, when, um, collecting one, one set will do the job. Now you can see in this case, we have, some, well, we often have around about four or five of these videos per subtopic. Sometimes the videos uh, go over the same concept. They cover the same concept, but they do it in a different way. So we wanna provide an alternative. This to, um, to uh, first of all, an alternative to just the teacher explaining it or an alternative to the textbook explaining it. And in, in some cases, there's more than one video explaining the same concept. So the students have um, many chances to be able to find the way um, that the, the method or the, the presentation mode that gives them the best understanding of, of that particular concept. The other feature in Nelson MindTap are the prior learning checks uh, that, I, that I want to talk about. Now, they, there is, there are a set of four or five questions at the start of each chapter, and they test whether students have the ability, have the skills to start that chapter. So it's the, that sort of um, learning stage um, that they're at. And if students, um, uh, if students answer it incorrectly, then um, there's always feedback that explains what the incorrect answer, what, what, what is incorrect about their thinking or their reasoning there. Um, and there's also like a, um, a full work solution with, with the question. So there's their learning experiences as well. They're, they're, these are supposed to teach students um, the skill um, that they, they are lacking. Now, the important thing about these prior learning checks too is that, um, the, the uh, results get recorded and you can see those results. So it's, uh, you, you, you can really get some feedback on how students are going on, whether they're prepared for, for a chapter. We have worksheets. I mean, they're, they're um, you know, skill practice or reinforcement. So we have a lot of these. Um, they are, most of them are just things that you would print out and give to students as as you've probably done in the past, but there are a handful of them that lend that lent themselves to being online worksheets, and we've got a few of those in um, in MindTap as well. Uh, in addition to um, the ones uh, the um, uh, work solutions that I mentioned, this is another teacher resource that's uh, part of MindTap, and they're the topic tests, and, and there's one of these for each chapter, so it's effectively a, a, a chapter test and it's in two parts, um, cal calculator free and calculator assumed. So again, it mimics the um, the, the exam format. And um, these are um, in, in the format that, that's for, for, for printing out and, and giving to students. And the other teacher resource is the, um, are the teaching programs, which um, are sort of about 20 or 30 pages of um, uh, sort of scoping out um, the, the whole course and it's in Word. So it's, um, uh, uh, it, it enables teachers to modify it for their school if um, uh, and whatever, uh, whatever their requirements are. So uh, this is just a summary of those resources that I've just mentioned. Um, as I said, the um, assignable work solutions to every question. Um, and as I think Dion mentioned, we effectively end up having all the um, SCARSA exams from 2016 to 2021 covered in some way, in some way, in the um, within the textbook, um, and um, and and therefore you also get 
work solutions to each of those as well in, in MindTap. And um, the video playlists, uh, as I said, we ended up with about, um, there's well over 100 video links um, per title. Okay, I'm handing over to uh, Donna with some nuts and bolts information. Sorry, thanks, Dirk. Um, I just wanted to, sorry, get myself sorted here. Sorry, um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Donna Hamlin and I'm the learning consultant for WA Sound. Um, I know after all of that fabulous information from Dion and Dirk, you're asking, how can I see it or how can I get my hands on a copy? Well, I guess that's where we come in. Um, if we go to, um, first, I just want to briefly touch on the pricing and availability. Availability is term four of this year. And this new senior math is offered at a print digital blend, which incorporates the book and the Nelson MindTap courseware at $89.95. We also offer a digital only option of the Nelson MindTap courseware, if that's your school's preference. And this is available at $42.95. We just go to the next slide. As I mentioned, I look after WA South, and my colleague, Glenn Watson, is the learning consultant for WA North. Glenn and I are out there visiting schools now, and if you haven't already heard from us, please reach out. We're more than happy to call out with sample material and to run through the Nelson Mind Tap with you. We can also help arrange a complimentary sample trial of the Nelson Mind Tap courseware for you to explore. And the best way to contact us is via our emails. So we've got glenn.watson at sengage.com and myself, donna.hamlin at sengage.com. So I just want to thank you again for your time today and hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you all for such a great presentation. Um, we have heaps of time for questions. So there is a couple in the Q&A that I'll go through. Um, Earlier there was a question about um, the WA Maths videos and whether they're made for, um, whether they're made specifically for the course or whether they're pulled from existing content. Um, which Dirk, you kind of covered, so the answer to that is both. Um, but there was also another question about have any questions been pulled from Vic or New South Wales or any other similar courses um, nationally? Um, I, I'll answer that. Um, yes, there are, there are questions from um, the uh, Victorian exams, but we've made, um, we've gone to a lot of effort to make sure that they are modified for Western Australia precisely. Um, and uh, in general, um, I well, I, I know that we've got it right because they're, you know, we put so much work into doing exactly that. And they are um, some high quality questions that, that have been integrated throughout. There are a lot of questions also that have been written by the authors of the chapters. So um, there's a mixture um, within the those sections. Those those calculator free and calculator assumed sections have, have a mixture of, of the SCARSA questions, of, of, of um, original questions written by the authors and also of questions um, that have been modified um, from the um, Victorian um, uh, exa uh, exams. There is another question where it says for students doing both applications and methods, are there any features that link the text um, where or where forward slash if um, there's any overlap present. Um, I'm not too sure what the, the exact questions are asking, but in terms of the features of the text, um, the structure of the text for methods is exactly the same as the structure of the text for the applications, if that's what you're alluding to, Josh. Um, what the students are getting out of the waste preparation and the exam success features of the 12 apps book is exactly what they're going to get out of the 12 methods book as well. Um, and there will be a webinar for the 12 methods series a little bit later on in the year as well, if you're wanting to jump in on that one. But it's um, it's pretty much an exactly the same design, just the, the content obviously is different. And um, obviously all the resources that provided are different as well. And then finally, we've got a Nelson Mindtap question, Dirk, but um, 
if students fail the prior learning checks, are there any resources provided within MindTap that address that, either a YouTube link or text from the 10 maths for WA, as in, is there any kind of resources that um, um, not Not in addition to the ones I mentioned where, where the incorrect answer um, prompts a, an explanation to the student as to what, what was wrong about the way they approached that. And in addition to that, provides a full correct work solution to it. So it does it does it does offer that those um, those two alternatives, but but not another not another link beyond that. There's another question. Do all questions have marking behaviours in Nelson Mind Um All the questions. Well, first of all, not all questions have marks. So, and so if they're an unmarked question, they don't have marking behaviours. Um, if if they are um, questions with marks, then either they have mark the, the marking behaviours um, and they're written in the style of um, uh, you know uh, of, of SCARSA if if they're non scarza questions, or if effectively the SCARSA um, the equivalent SCARSA statement, marking behaviour statement would be, gives the correct answer, then we just have the answer um, bolded and ticked. So we, we sort of go for a, a sort of a simpler version rather than doubling up um, uh, on that. But, uh, but um, you know, the, the, so that, that would be the only, that would be the exception. And then there was one earlier question, if we could just have someone ask about it summary between this series and what Sadler kind of does? Ah, okay. Look, the, the reason we're publishing this series is not, not because we, you know, uh, 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 are not publishing Sadler. We're publishing Sadler as well. And this is a complement to that. We want to, we wanted to be able to satisfy the, um, the demands for a different sort of book that we we sensed was out there um, amongst teachers. Um, we're happy to, um, you know, if, if you if, for those teachers who want to stick with Sadler, we're, you know, we're, we're perfectly happy for that to happen. We, you know, we would encourage that. But if you're looking for a change and there's sort of an it's time factor and you, you really want to have something different, um, and uh, this is quite a different approach. And we, this is the way um, we, we would hope that you would um, seriously look at, um, at WI Maths as your alternative. more questions in the chat does anyone have any final questions that they would like answered I might give it a minute or two and then if there's not we can end I just want to give it one more minute awesome. I also popped uh, two links in the chat for you to if you'd like to make an appointment with our WA consultants to learn more about this series or to learn more about Nelson MindTap. And there's also a link in the chat where you can request sample pages for this as well. Um, but if there are no final questions, thank you to our presenters for tonight. I hope everyone has a great evening.